Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and today we are using the greatest common factor and the distributive property or distribution, and we're putting them together into something that will help us to eventually simplify expressions. We will look at the distributive property and simplifying, and we're going to look at the greatest common factor, and we are going to put all of this together. So it's important to pay close attention as we move through it. And if there's ever a time where it seems like it's getting a little too complex, kind of pause and slow down. We will practice for each step. Let's do this. First off, greatest common factor. We are looking at two numbers when we're asked for the greatest common factor. So if we were asked to find the greatest common factor of 6s and 15, first off, don't freak out about the variable. It basically doesn't impact anything unless it's in both terms, and it's not. So we are looking for the greatest common factor between those two numbers, 6 and 15. We list the factors identify all of the factors, quickly pick out the greatest common factor in this case, which is 3. All right, that's what greatest common factor is. Those are the steps I want you to remember. Again, you're just looking at the numbers unless there's the same variable in both, which we will not do in sixth grade math. So you're just looking at the numbers for this. All right, next part the distributive property. The distributive property is that you multiply what's outside the parentheses times each term inside of the parentheses. So in this case, the three on the outside gets multiplied times two s, and it gets multiplied times five. We separate those multiplication expressions with an addition sign. And you can't just join together everything that wouldn't work properly. So we do separate them with that addition sign and then we multiply each part. So 3 times 2s gives us 6s and 3 times 5 gives us 15. That is our distributive property being used. Notice the variable doesn't change very much. The main thing that the variable tells us is that at the end, we can't join together 6s and 15, right? Other than that, the distributive property is working the same way it always has throughout all of the lessons we've used it. Also, one more thing to note is that 3 times the quantity of 2s plus 5 can be written in two different ways. It can be written with that dot, like it is in that green example, or without the dot, like you see in orange there, and they mean the same thing. So let's take a deep breath and practice just that step. Just the step of greatest or of distributing. So I want you to try this out. Multiply the four times each term inside the parentheses. See what answer you get. Remember, you cannot join unlike terms, so it's okay to have an addition symbol in your answer. Three, two, one, go. All right, I'm going to multiply four times six X, then I'm going to multiply four times seven. I separate them by an addition symbol, right? Because there's an addition symbol there inside the parentheses. So I'll do four times six is 24, and four times seven is 28. The variable just remains. Okay, I can't join together those because they are not like terms. 24 X's can't be joined with 28. Now we're going to take the two things that we've done, greatest common factor and the distributive property, and we're going to join those together. On the worksheet, you will be asked to do questions that are just like this, distributing. That is some of the questions on the worksheet and in the quiz but you'll also be asked to put together the greatest common factor and the um, distributive property. And this is the steps here. Let's take a deep breath and let's get into it. When we're asked to find an equivalent equation using the greatest common factor of this expression, 4x plus 6, the steps that we would follow is first, we would list the greatest common factors 
or all the factors of 4 and 6. We identify our greatest common factor. So we've done that before, right? We're just listing the factors of 4, listing the factors of 6, identifying our greatest common factor. That we've done before. Then we look at this expression, 4x plus 6, and we are going to list factors of both of those terms, and we include the factor of 2 because that was our greatest common factor. So basically, we're splitting up 4x into being 2 times 2x, and we're splitting up 6 into being 2 times 3. Just to clarify again, the reason that we're doing this is because of that factor of 2. That common factor of 2, we have can now factor that out of the entire term or the entire expression. I'm sorry. Watch this. I'm going to set up an equation where it's 2 times 2x and 2 times 3. Whoa, we've just gone in reverse, right? We've taken that original um, expression, 4x plus 6, and we have factored it into being something that looks like what kind of the opposite of what we were doing earlier, right? And the way we did that was we pulled out a common factor, or we factored each of the terms, and we took that common factor and put it outside of the parentheses. Now, you can double check your work with this by multiplying 2 times 2x gives us 4x and 2 times 3 gives us 6. All right, we can double check our work to make sure we haven't changed anything and we haven't. We have just factored this equation, taken a factor out of this equation, and this is actually simplifying the expression. Even though the expression looks more complex, it's actually a little bit more simple and you can use it in special ways later on in pre-algebra and algebra one. At this stage, this is all we're doing and this is the step that we're getting to. You will use this in your future though. All right, time to practice. I want you to try simplifying using the distributive property. That's another way to say, find the greatest common factor and rewrite it, okay? It's another way of saying the same thing. So go ahead and simplify 16x plus 20. You're gonna find the greatest common factor write out each of those terms using that factor and then kind of pull it outside of the parentheses. All right, are you back from trying that out? Let's walk through this step by step. First off, 16 and 20 and this. You know you're gonna get something that looks like that at the end. So let's start out with that and we'll fill in the blanks as we go. First off, the factors of 16 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. The factors of 20, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. There are some common factors, 2, 4, and that's it. So our greatest common factor is 4. Now let's move over to this expression, 16x plus 20. We're going to write out 16x as a product of 4 and 4x. We write out 20, oh, and that means that it's going there, 4 times 4x. Now we're going to write out 20 as a product of 4 and 5. Notice that 4 on the outside is being multiplied times the number that goes there. Okay, that's what we're doing with this. So that is the process, and on the worksheet you will give, be given opportunities to practice this. I encourage you to watch the video recording of the walkthrough of the worksheet so that you can see me solving several more of these over and over. I am going to show you a little bit of a shortcut. Um, when it comes time to take the quiz, you'll often be given um, multiple choice answers like that. If you're given a multiple choice answer, you can work backwards. So if I'm asked to find the equivalent equation using the greatest common factor of 5x plus 15, and I'm given these four options, I could actually take each one, use the distributive property, and calculate does it equal 5x plus 15. 
5 times 2x is 10x, so that's 10x plus 15, because 5 times 3 is 15. And then I'd move on to the next one. 5x times 1 is 5x, 5x times 3 is 15x. Notice that 5x on the outside means I have to multiply x times each term inside the parentheses, so that one's definitely not right. Um, let's try this one out, 5 times the quantity of x plus 5. When I multiply that in, I'll get 5x and 25. And then this one actually is the correct answer, where I'll get 5x plus 15. This entire process might be quicker than what we did on the previous slide, okay? of finding the greatest common factor and then factoring each term and then writing it out like this. So if that's the case, it's absolutely fine. And going through the process this way helps you practice using the distributive property. And the more you do this, the more you'll start recognizing what is actually happening with factoring out five from each of those terms. All right, so this is actually, um, although it is a shortcut, it's good practice to try to understand how to do this shortcut moving forward. Otherwise, I wouldn't tell you a shortcut if it wasn't helpful for you to actually try using it and learning from it. All right, I want you to try. Find the equivalent equation using the greatest common factor of 4x plus 6. Try it out. Welcome back. Now, what I'd also like you to do is to try out that shortcut I showed you. If you were given options A, B, C, D, I want you to try out using the distributive property to expand all of those terms. Try that out now. Lots of practice. All right. Now I'm going to go through them kind of quickly here because you've already gone through them twice. If I were doing the first term, uh, 2 times the quantity of x plus 3, I would multiply 2 times x and 2 times 3. 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6. That is not 4x plus 6, so I'll move on. Um, 2 times 2x and 2 times 3, that is 4x plus 6, so I know that option B is correct. But I'm going to do the other ones as well just to double check 2 times x and 2 times 4. 2 times 4x and 2 times 6, right? I'm practicing using that distributive property over and over and over because I know it's good practice and you'll use it moving forward. One last question, I want you to try this one out. With this one, you're, let's say you're not given the options A, B, C, D. You're just given use the greatest common factor to simplify this or write an equivalent equation. I want you to find the greatest common factor, and I want you to fill this in. Three, two, one, go. All right, welcome back. The factors of 24, there's a lot of them. The factors of 30, there's also a lot of them. We're going to look at our common factors of 2, 3, 6, and 6 is the greatest common factor. So I will rewrite this expression, 24q plus 30. And I'm going to write each of those terms, 24q, as a product of 6. So 6 times 4 gives me 24, and the q just stays there. And 6, that's going to go down here, right? 6 times 4q. And then 30 becomes 6 times 5. So that will go in there. All right? It's just filling in the blanks, really. That's how we do it. I know this is complex. Please practice using that worksheet and watch the video of me going through the questions from the worksheet. You're going to find the greatest common factor, um, factor out that greatest common factor, and fill in the blanks. If you have additional questions or need extra practice, definitely check out that worksheet. Good luck on the quiz. Have a wonderful day.